Hello and welcome into the next verse. My name is George and if this is your very first time here or you've been here before but haven't subscribed yet, please do so along with turn on the notification bell so you know you're alerted when I drop these videos, especially in the off season. They're a little sporadic. Uh, I think the last time I dropped the video was like a big, about a week and a half ago and it was a big one. It was a big one. It was an Jaden Ivey video. This one, this one's uh, gonna be interesting. This one is basic because we're here. It's Monday, Monday, June 20th, day after my birthday. And, uh, you know, Father's Day, June, <laughs> that was my birthday yesterday. That's why I didn't drop a video this weekend. I was busy doing, you know, other stuff. But here we are. And the rumors just popped this morning. I woke up to just hundreds of tweets and messages and questions. And so now I'm here to address them as many as I can. First thing I'm gonna talk about is actually not about the draft. No, it's something else that dropped today. Shams dropped this article today with In The Athletic where basically he connects the Knicks to Kyrie Irving. Ah, all right, let's look at it. Let's see what he says here. Sources, Kyrie Irving, Nets are at an impasse in conversations about his future in Brooklyn clearing way for the seven-time all-star to consider the open market. Lakers and Knicks expected to emerge among potential suitors. Now also mentioned, I think in that article or another uh, athletic article, that the Clippers are also someone, which just to give you, I mean, I think Clippers makes the most sense, to be honest with you, for the Clippers and for the Nets, but I'm not gonna get into the details of it. I'm not gonna get into what it would take uh, Fred Katz dropped an article in The Athletic as well explaining how the Knicks can open up cap space for it, which interestingly also shows how the Knicks can open up ca that same cap space for Bradley Beal, for Zach Levine. He didn't mention that in the article, but if you can afford Kyrie, you can afford anybody else. So just something to bear in mind. It was interesting. It was a very interesting read. However, what, 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 what's the point of this? Really, what is the point of this? Should the Knicks even entertain this at all? No, <laughs> not at all. Absolutely not. And I will, and I, I, look, I, there's a lot of people who are supporting this idea out there and I respect that opinion. I respect that feeling of we got to swing for the fences sometimes. He's a transcendent talent. I get that. I get that. However, it's just, to me, it comes down to one single thing. If Kyrie was all that, that all those people that are talking about and supporting acquiring him, if he was all that, the Nets and the Kyrie and Kyrie would not be at an impasse. They'd work out a deal because the Nets are all in. Nets have KD. They have to win. The Nets have to win next season. The fact that they do not see Kyrie as a solid fit for this team shows us, should show us, that he's not the right fit for almost any team, especially a team like the Knicks. We don't need that. We do not need a player like that, that much of a head case, number one, to come into that locker room it would just be so destructive. I don't care how talented he is. It would be very destructive. Also, what was he good for? 50 games a year? Who knows? He might like at one point in the middle of the season, like he did a couple seasons ago, just take off for a couple of weeks. <laughs> Why do we need that headache? And we're going to pay and give up assets because it would have to be a sign and trade. Forget about it. Forget about it. Let him be someone else's headache. Also, the final thing is, why would we want to help the Nets? Why would Dolan want to help the Nets get out from under this headache of Kyrie Irving? Makes no sense in that respect. It could just be a, you know, a Knicks, a Knicks for Clicks uh, type situation where, like, hey, we throw the Knicks in there, it's gonna get attention. So, it got attention. It got my attention. However, it's now time to move on to another part, something else that was in the article. Here we go. Indiana Pacers. The Pacers are seriously discussing trades centered on Mal uh, Malcolm Brogdon and Miles Turner, sources said. The Wizards and Knicks are interested in Brogdon, 
armed with the numbers 10 and 11 picks respectively, sources said. All right, we've been hearing about the Brogdon rumors for a while now. Again, injury prone. You know, expensive. I, 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 I just, I mean, it's not the worst thing in the world, but for, if we're to give up our 11th pick for Malcolm Brogdon at this moment, I don't know, it just feels like two steps backwards instead of one step forward to me. That's what it feels like. And also, what if we do that? We make this trade and then he pops an ACL and he's gone. So now we've wasted our draft pick and we have a guy on the books. Forget it. Why, why do we need, why are we entertaining headaches like this? Let's move on. Let's move on from headaches like this. Here's an interesting thing. Draft notes in that same article by Shams. Kentucky's Shaden Sharp is the mystery man of the NBA draft. Sharp is a projected high lottery pick and sources say he has conducted strong group workouts such as three on three scrimmages to showcase his ability for teams who have not seen him play organized basketball over the past year or two. Instead of conducting individual workouts, Sharp sought the competition, working out for teams in uh, between the draft ranges of numbers one through 13. Now, that the Knicks fit in that range. However, it's not 100% confirmed that he worked out for the Knicks. We don't know. But it says right there, one through 13. So there's some kind of, the Knicks have, the Knicks and Sharp have had some kind of interaction. Whether it, what they were at a workout or it was uh, an interview, we're not sure, but there has been some kind of connection there. I He's still a mystery man. And the way, depending on how the way things shake out, he might be an interesting player for the New York Knicks who are looking for elite talent, for talent that will pop, that has the potential to pop. There's no guarantee with any of these players, obviously. But some of them do have that shine to them. Shane Sharp is one of those as well, along with the guy we've been talking about for quite a while now, Jaden Ivey. Stephen Bond, now he did, uh, Jaden Ivey did an interview, and I'll show you a uh, pieces of it. Uh, he did an interview today uh, talking with, with reporters about his draft situation, who he's worked out for. And uh, Bondi put out this, uh, he, put, he dropped an article today actually about it. The smoke is building around Jaden Ivey to the Knicks. And that is for sure. There's a lot of smoke. A lot of smoke around from reputable sources. So it's really interesting. Let's uh, let's go to the video right now. You know, I've just seen where the, the lottery um just the teams that, you know, got the earliest picks. Um, and I started looking at film of, you know, Sacramento. Um, you know, obviously, you know, could be, you know, situations that where I could land, you know, to New York. Uh, you know, I watched a lot of, you know, Detroit, um, you know, the pieces that they have, you know, young talent, um, you know, OKC is one I could see myself at. Um, but you know, really, all of those teams, I feel like you know, I could, I could see myself at, and you know, we're just gonna see what happens on draft night. What do you think of their roster, and, and what do you think of your fit next to guy like next to guys like Julius Randall and um, R.J. Barrett? Um, I think you know, I could, I could definitely fit. Um, feel like I, you know, have that, you know, DNA to you know be a winner. Um, you know, you obviously got to have guys, you know, that want to win and in order to win. Uh, and I feel like, you know, he even brought up the Knicks on his own. That's right. Let's just jump over to here. So now Ivy unexpectedly discusses the Knicks. This uh, was dropped in uh, an Instagram uh, uh, Knicks feed. There's a source on this uh, who's sourcing Stefan Bondi. Uh, Jaden Ivy enlisting his options. There are situations where I can go to New York. There you go. And then he went on to say, I've got a tremendous opportunity and tremendous organization. Nice to hear. Now, bear in mind, he is a CAA client. And we all know, obviously, about the Leon Rose CAA connection. So they could be a little bit of like, you know, say some glowing things about the Knicks so that help our, our guy Leon. And he is trying to get you. So drop, drop his, drop, you know, mention him. It could be some of that working there. But the most interesting thing to me is the next tweet that Bondi dropped. Jaden Ivey said he hasn't been in contact with the Kings and hasn't worked out for them. If I got drafted there, it wouldn't be the worst option. 
Wow. I mean, uh, you know, it's like, <laughs> you know, if someone so went out with me, eh, it wouldn't be the worst option. It's like, wow, that is not high praise. That is not enthusiasm. There's zero excitement there for Ivy going to play, going to play for the Sacramento Kings. Now, not surprising, you know, but still, when a player says it like that, it is surprising. Very surprising. Something else that's happened. Something else that's happened as well, right after these tweets and interviews dropped today. Chris Persinian, I think that's how you say his name. <laughs> he tweeted this out. Check it out. So it looks like the Vegas money is on Ivy to the Knicks. Jaden Ivey, he tweeted, I said, Jaden Ivey was a plus 800 to be the Knicks first round pick approximately an hour ago. Davis, Bronham, and Griffin were all more likely according to DraftKings. Ivey is now the favorite at plus 350. Oh my God, do not panic, but Jaden Ivey is now the favorite to be the Knicks first draft pick at plus 350. Congrats if you grabbed him, grabbed it at 800, plus 800. Wow. So the smart money, which is what usually we call Vegas money. Smart money is on the Knicks pulling this off. Now here's something to bear in mind. It's very rare, very rare that teams move up that hard, that far from the 11th pick, double any t double digit uh, draft uh, uh, slots up into the top four or five. It's very rare. It has happened. I think it happened like uh, like 20 something years ago. There was another move that was similar, but. I think I think there's only been two moves this drastic in the past 30 years. Maybe in years past, things like this happened did happen a little more often. I haven't gotten that far back in it, so it's rare. However, that doesn't mean it's not possible. So, I mean, it feels like this is legit. It feels like Leon has a legitimate path to make this happen. So right now, it's just a wait and see. But it's a very exciting wait and see. It's a very exciting wait and see because there, there really just aren't that many electrifying elite athleticism guards in this league that are available. Those, I mean, we salivate at a Donovan Mitchell. L look at it. We, we still have to wait and see what happens. Those kind of guys, Zach Levine. You know, I mean, maybe, maybe a sign and trade order, but you know, it, we, they're just not that many. So when you have a chance to grab someone like that, you have to jump on it. And this is what's happening here. I feel, I'll tell you, if the Knicks draft team, the think tank, believe that Jaden Ivey has that all-star potential, like legitimate repeat all-star potential, not just get hits there once or twice, but that could really spark a franchise. If they really believe it, they should make this happen. Make it happen. Now, of course, it all comes down to cost. If it costs RJ, hmm, do you want to make that happen? I think, I think not. Again, that's, you know, one step forward, two steps back kind of situation. However, well, possibly not, because what if Ivy does pop? But still, it's a gamble. Why? Why? We have other assets. Could it be an Obi? Could it be IQ? Could it be Grimes? A Grimes cam and picks package? You know, it's possible. I've read so many different variations on this, and some of them look legit. Actually, the ones that involve three teams, even a four team, is possible. So, it just seems like there's just too much chatter out there that this is not something that has real potential of happening. So let's keep our fingers crossed. If you believe in Ivy, like I do right now for the Knicks, uh, I mean, he, I, I don't see him as a, as, a, as a lead guard though. I just don't see him as a number one guard, for sure, as a point guard at the moment. Can he grow into that? Possibly, I've said that before. But in terms of just adding electrifying skills and talent to this team, along with IQ, if we, we hold on to him, RJ, Hold on to him. And Obi, hold on to him. That would be a nice foursome. And then you throw in, you throw in, I mean, maybe, we, maybe, we, maybe we're able to hold on to Mitch. You know, or possibly we, well, we won't speculate about that right now. But that could be a really interesting uh, perimeter team that could just attack that rim constantly. 
I really like that. I really like that. And they're young. They could be vibrant. I mean, Ivy can help unlock RJ, RJ, you know, vice versa. And then IQ is just going to keep developing. One thing that I learned about IQ watching the playoffs is why he is so exciting. Because he has that ability like a Curry does. Like a Dame does. And I'm not saying he is of that skill level. But he can, he can devastate a defense in three, four possessions in a row. Especially with those long range three three pointers he shoots off the dribble, pull ups, the guy is just he strikes like we've said before he strikes he strikes a fear of uh, of, the, of God into the defense, and he should. I think he's going to keep developing. He could really develop into a really nice piece for a contending team. Could, will he, could he be a contender? Uh, could he be a starting point guard on a contending team? I'm not saying that, but can he be a high level rotational piece? Like a pool, like a Jordan pool. Could he become like a Jordan pool in essence, in terms of his three level ability? Look how he adjusted his floater. He finally started finishing at the rim better towards the second half, towards the end of the season. Very excited about, and his playmaking has come a long way. Either way, if this is something that's potentially out there, I, we gotta make it happen. So we're gonna see, we have a few more days to find out. Now let's look at other players that have gotten interest from the Knicks recently. Today, prospects Knicks have interviewed and or worked out. It was confirmed. Uh, Alder Almo tweeted this out. Terry Easton says he did a really good job in Knicks workouts and the feedback he got was he was one of the best players they've worked out and there was a level of dominance. Beautiful, beautiful. This is like if we hold on to the 11th pick or maybe even trade down, who knows? Depending on how things start shaking out. The next player is A.J. Griffin, who I'm a big fan of. I'm a big fan of, if we keep the 11th pick, A.J. Griffin should be someone the Knicks should look at. Because it seems like Matherin is going to be gone. But if they can, you know, if uh, they can't pull off the Ivy trade and there's an opportunity to kind of move up a couple of uh, slots to get Matherin, I think we should look at that too. However, there's been zero chatter about, about that situation of late, past week and a half or two. But this came out today, uh, Alder Almo again, he tweeted this out. AJ Griffin says he met RJ once or twice. He adds that the Knicks were his last workout and it was an individual workout. He he might be the best long range pure, shoot, pure shooter in the draft. The one thing that I worry about, and I tweeted this out, is his stance. He has that wide stance. Uh, and also because of the uh, his injuries that he suffered uh, previously before he got to Duke. You know, it took away some of his bursts, his, his explosiveness. But he did look like he was gaining, he was gaining it as the season went on. He did get a little tired in the in the in, in the March Madness, which is to be expected, you know, for especially rooks like him. However, it there's a chance if he could regain, let's say, 85 to 90 percent of the burst that he had before, and then build upon that with with with, with you know honing his skills and maybe trying to adjust that stance a little bit so he's not so spread out because that's also impacts his ability to work, get around his, uh, his his defender. So let's say if he can work on all those things, but the shot is real. The shot is real. I think he shot 45% from behind the arc last season. So interesting, interesting player to keep an eye on for the 11th pick. And the last one that was mentioned today is Johnny Davis. Ian Begley tweeted this out. Wisconsin's Johnny Davis says he interviewed with Knicks at the Combine. Davis said he thinks he can fit in with Tom Thibodeau's defensive approach and can impact the game on that end as a rookie. I have listened to uh, several uh, other podcasts and uh, done some reading and due diligence on Johnny Davis. I am, I am I'm a little more enthusiastic about him as a Nick now after doing more research on him than I was about a month ago or two, a month and a half ago. However, I, I feel like there's going to be other options for, for, for the Knicks. And I mean, I, I do, I do like Johnny Davis. I think he could be an interesting fit. The thing is, um, he, he could be an interesting fit. I don't, I don't, that's, that's pretty much all I want to say about him right now. Again, I have a tremendous trust in Walt Perrin and, and the group. So if they feel that he's the guy, go for him. Because what he they what they've done with IQ, what they've done with um, uh, Grimes, and even Obi, 
even Obi, even though Obi is the slow starter, it took him a while, and unfortunately, you know, uh, Randall was in his way. This could be an interesting get right there. So, this is where we're at right now. This is where we're at. We are in the final few days. There's just hours left. Will the Knicks make the big shocking move of this draft and pull off a leap upwards to grab possibly a transcendent talent? It's gonna be interesting. It's gonna be interesting. Stay tuned. Okay. Well, thank you for watching this. Again, my name is George. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so and hit that thumbs up button along with dropping your comments. Love the comments. I want to hear your feelings about all these players that we've talked about here and potential ideas. I mean, I want to hear your thoughts about, uh, you know, Brogdon, obviously the Kyrie situation, but any of the other players that Knicks will be looking at to draft. And I will see you around the next verse.